This is the most complex object we've done so far in over 10 years. It is a commission work made for an artist from America and it will be a part of an exhibition that will take place in Japan this summer. It's been a three years long journey and it is finally coming to an end and it looks like we'll make it. In four weeks we have to complete it, do final testing, disassemble it and pack it on a pallet so we are quite in a rush right now. It will be picked up at our castle workshop in Brazil on 13 of April and transported to Hamburg and loaded to a container there. Two weeks later the container will be loaded on a French cargo vessel with the name CMA CGM Louvre. I was curious to find more details about the ship that will carry the result of our three years long work and I'm really excited to see it is a modern ship. It was launched in 2020, the same year we started working on this artwork. It is powered by LNG, our pellet will take only a tiny space on this huge monster, but I'm glad that moving it across the planet will produce a bit less pollution. So this beast will transport it to Japan at the beginning of June and after delivery of the pellet to the museum it will be unpacked and inspected for damage by the local staff. On the 10th of July we are coming there to unpack and install the artwork. The artist's exhibition will open before the end of July. I will let you know in advance just in case someone of you would like to come and visit it. At the beginning of February we got delayed on the H Nixie 2 production. We were waiting for the digits and grids to come. The supplier prolonged their standard lead times from two weeks to a month and sometimes we are waiting even longer. This is something we are seeing a lot among our suppliers right now. But finally uh, now we have all the parts that we need to continue the production so we are working on the tubes. The most serious problem that is slowing us right now is that some of the tubes are being pumped to vacuum significantly slower than others. This is causing more delays and brings potential problems in the future with reliability because in the worst case the root cause of the problem can be contamination of the parts which always means trouble with partial glow of the digits later in their life. We are now trying to find out what is going on and to do that we need to analyze the gas in the chamber during pumping. So far we know that a lot of carbon monoxide is developed from internal components, also some carbon dioxide and hydrogen. We also have some unknown gases on masses 12 and 16. These gases can be signs of the decomposition of hydrocarbons, possibly oils, and oils are always bad for vacuum. We are using only materials that we learn to be vacuum safe for our R tube. The suspected part is the large anode cup that is made from steel and blackened for better contrast. We do the blackening ourselves to avoid contamination by oils on the side of a supplier because they normally treat all the blackened parts with oil. 
The part is carefully cleaned from oil. The surface layer is etched away with ferric chloride to get rid of possible remaining contaminants. And then it is blackened by a mixture of sodium hydroxide and sodium nitrate. All this is inorganic stuff and should be safe for vacuum even if it leaves small traces on the parts after washing and rinsing in deionized water. To confirm that the problem is the anode cap, we isolated it in a special tube and now we test parts from different batches of blackening before and after blackening and so on, trying to find where the parts get contaminated. Fortunately, there are much easier problems to be solved. Several times we found the complete artwork off with no Nixie tubes glowing. We thought that it might be overheating and shutting down, but eventually we found a problem in the multi-turn potentiometer that sets the voltage level. It had bad contact inside, so the power supply was setting the voltage to zero. For now the problem is fixed, but we'll replace the potentiometer with a quality one. This is exactly the type of problem that can be prevented if we have enough time for testing and we don't have to rush with the work. To compensate high electricity costs and its impact to our business, I'm building a small solar plant. It will have a 20 kilowatts of power in solar panels and it will be installed on our house. Annually, it will produce roughly the same amount of electricity that we consume uh, at the castle in the workshop, uh, which is roughly 20 megawatt hours. It's not a perfect solution because the roofs where it is installed are a few kilometers from the castle so we cannot directly consume it but rather have to sell it to the grid and then buy it back which makes it more, uh, more expensive and more complicated but that's what we have and what we have to use. So it will be installed on three roofs. The garden shed is the biggest one with 11 kilowatts this is already fully installed, also all the technology is inside. I'm now finishing installation of another 4 kilowatts on this flat roof and the rest will be on the house. I would like to have that done during March and then start doing paperwork and all the related bureaucracy things that are related uh, to connection of the power plant to the grid. I will try to cover all the technical aspects and financial aspects in the future video. Practically all projects that we work on uh, needs custom electronics. So when we develop the custom electronics, we need to go through a series of prototypes. The best way how to get to the final version of the board is to first make a rough prototype, test it, find possible troubles, make a revision, make another board and uh, do it until we have fully working board. This can take two, three, four revisions. The board usually contains tens, maybe sometimes hundreds uh, individual components and it takes a lot of time to assemble them by hand. A common way is to order PCB assembly service. They will deliver you a fully assembled piece. The problem is that it usually takes a week to sometimes longer. And uh, if you need to do several revisions, it can drag for a couple of months until you have the fully working electronics. So I'm trying to find a way how to make this thing faster. I thought that maybe we can make use of a simple pick and place machine, like no complications, no automatic feeders. Every time a new board comes, we would put it into the machine and populate it with the components. The components are usually the same because we have just a couple of 
components that we reuse. Uh, so this could be fairly simple. So we bought a kit uh, of a machine that is called Light Placer. Now we have a first board here with several hundred components on it. This is a perfect example. Uh, the, this board would take a couple of hours to populate by hand. So let's try how fast we can get with, with the Light Placer machine. It's a first use, so I don't know that much of the machine yet, but let's give it a try. In the end, it took me roughly four hours to assemble the board. If I did it manually, I would be maybe faster. But uh, this was the first real use uh, of the light placer and there is definitely a room to improve. 
uh, especially on setting up the tapes because this took me over one hour to set. So once the tapes are set, entered into the system and positioned in light placer, you can return that to them and reuse them. Then I struggled a little bit with the export of the data from Eagle. Another 15 minutes took me to find out what is the problem with wrong positioning of the connector. We also need to find a better way how to make a SMT stencil. Uh, the one you saw in the video was made from a white plastic foil, 0.12 millimeters thick, and we cut it on laser. And it sort of looks good, but the openings were too big and too much paste was applied on the panel. I want to avoid using frames uh, because it would take additional time to set up the SMT stencil in the frame. We will be using this uh, stencil only once and then another board revision will be made and another stencil will come. And once we have a final board, uh, we will send it for full PCB assembly service and we will not work with the stencils ourselves anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 